Hey guys, how's it going? Jay here once again with another video. And this time it's all about Logical Volume Manager or LVM. That's right, I'm doing an entire video about LVM so I can show you guys just how awesome it is. I'm going to show you why it's awesome, how to set it up, some of its greatest features, and in this video you'll know all of the basics of LVM and maybe even some advanced stuff too. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here on my laptop I have two SSH sessions open. I have one to a server called No LVM and another to a server cleverly named Yes LVM. So I guess you could probably tell which one has LVM set up and which one doesn't. And the reason why I did this is because I want to show you guys real quick why you want LVM. One of the many reasons why I think it's a good idea, especially on servers. Now what I'm going to do is open up Tmux. You don't have to follow along with this because this is not a Tmux tutorial series. I have a series on that, so if you are curious how to use Tmux, then you can go ahead and check out that video series. But the reason why I'm doing this is so I could do what's called a split. And it looks like that. I have a terminal on the right and a terminal on the left. And that's because I want to show you guys the available disk space on this server while I intentionally break it. Yes, that's right. I'm going to intentionally break this server. I'm going to show you right now exactly how I intend to do that. So what I'm going to do is on the right hand side, I'm going to do watch df-h. And that's a little bit big, so I'm going to lower the font size temporarily here. I think that's better for now. I just want to make sure you guys are able to see it. But the watch command just repeats the same command every two seconds, and I'm just doing df-h, which is showing me the available space on this server. And you can see, like right here, it's 27 gigabytes that are free right now. So we're only using 3.8 gigabytes. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and just fill up the hard drive space really fast. That's right, I'm going to completely saturate the free space on this server. Again, this is not LVM, so let's go ahead and see what happens. So the command that I'm about to run, don't run this guys, this is a destructive command. It causes problems, do not run this. If you must run it, run it in a VM or something completely disposable that you don't care about. But anyway, what I'm going to do is switch to root. And then the command I'm about to run is going to fill the hard drive quick. So what you want to do is watch this right here on the right. The available space on the root file system. We're going to watch that drop. Are you ready? So what I'm going to do is cat dev zero. And I'm going to redirect that to a file. And for the file, I want to simulate a real problem that happens a lot. And that is a log file getting crazy and just filling up your hard drive. It happens. I've experienced it. I think many others have as well. So what I'm going to do is pipe that to var log and I'll call it application.log just like that. And I'll press enter and just watch the right hand side. Watch the free space just drop. You see that counting down, 19, 17, 15. It's just continually dropping. So this is a bad application that is just logging a bunch of stuff and it's filling up the entire file system right now. We are running out of space very quickly. And the command aborted and we got this right error. There's no more space left on the device. So even if I wanted to do something like echo learn linux.tv and pipe that to test file, I can't do that. There's no space left on the device. That's how bad it is. I can't even write a text file. And this is a scenario that happens a lot. Now, in this case, I can obviously clear that file, delete that file. But if I had LVM, I could actually grow the file system to get myself some additional space. But since I don't have LVM set up, I can't expand the file system at all. It's full for real until I find a way to clear 
whatever the problem is as far as why it's full. Now, one thing that I can do in this case, I guess, is I could use the truncate command, maybe with a size of zero, against the same file that I used to fill the drive with. So I'll do var log application.log, just the same file as before, and then you'll see the available space just come back pretty quick. Let's do it. And boom, we're back to 27 gigs free. So I was able to recover very quickly, but I did lose all of the logging information. Now there's other ways I could have recovered. I could have even gzipped the file, but even that wouldn't work because the drive is full. But there's more than one way to recover from this situation. But one option that we didn't have was the option to actually expand the file system. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like if I was using LVM. So I switched over to this server right here, which does have LVM installed and set up. So if I do df-h just to show you guys, you can see that the, you know, this looks a little weird, right? I mean, it doesn't look like it looks here where it shows the root file system, you know, dev sda1 right here. And that's where the root file system is. And basically you can see that there's a longer device name here. That's what LVM looks like when it's set up. I have a volume group named Ubuntu or VG underscore Ubuntu and a logical volume LV underscore root. I'll explain what that means in just a moment, but we can already see some differences. I do have less available space here, and that's actually because the root file system size is smaller. I'll show you why that's the case in just a moment, but we definitely have enough free space on the server. There's 38% that's being used and 4.4 gigabytes available. I mean, not a lot, but it's fine. The server's fine. There's nothing going on here. Um, it's running just perfectly normally, so we're good. But what I'm going to do is go through the same exercise here. So I'll open up Tmux again, and I'll split the windows here. So in this case, I think what's probably better is if I split it the other way, Maybe I should have done that with the first one and I can have the font size bigger too. That's pretty cool. Anyway, I'm going to repeat the exact same thing. So I'm going to switch to root. And again, don't follow along. This is destructive as I mentioned. So I'm going to cat dev zero and we're going to redirect its output to var log application.log. And again, just watch the free space drop. So I'll press enter. And we can see it's already dropping down. And same thing, no space left on device. We have completely saturated the available space on this server. So whatever can we do to recover from this? Now, I could run the same truncate command as I did on the other server, but the problem with that, again, is I lose all of that logging information. Maybe I actually needed that data for you know debugging to find out what caused this problem in the first place. And what I'm going to need to do is just find another way to recover. And I'm going to use LVM to recover in this case to show you guys one of the many ways in which it is awesome. Now, unfortunately, I do need some free space in order to actually expand the file system. Now, I don't need much, but I can clear maybe a different file or clean up something else. What I'm going to try right now is apt clean to see if that's enough to recover. And then I'm going to run this command right here, LV extend. And don't worry, I'll explain all of these commands later in this video. Now watch the bottom of the screen. It still shows that 100% of the file system is in use. So I'll press enter and boom, look at that. Not only did I fix the problem, I now have more available space on this file system than I even started with. Look at that. That is just awesome. I was able to resize the root file system without restarting the server. And that's important to know because if this was an actual server that had an actual purpose, and maybe the users are complaining that there's no space available on the server at all, I was able to fix it with one command and without restarting the server, which means that the application may have been running, maybe not well, but it was running, 
and I was able to fix it online without a shutdown or a restart. Now that is one of the many reasons why LVM is awesome. And one takeaway with this is that if you are setting up a server, in my opinion, you should always set up LVM on your server. Now, worst case scenario, you might set up LVM and never need it, never use it, never even remember that it's there. But if you ever want to benefit from LVM, you'll wish that you had set it up that way. So I do recommend setting up LVM when you first set up a new installation. This video is sponsored by Linode, my cloud infrastructure provider for over two years. Linode provides Linux servers that make it easy and affordable to host your own app, site, or service live in the cloud. Whether you're a Linux power user or just starting out, you can use Linode. You can start from scratch and fully customize your server for any application, or use Linode's one-click apps to deploy game servers, WordPress sites, personal VPNs, and much more. You can even upload and run your own image. Servers can be easily scaled up or down, so you only pay for what you need. And regular backups are also available, so you'll never lose your work. Best of all, Linode comes with 24-7 support that is 100% managed by humans by phone support or support ticket. To get $20 in free credit when you create your new Linode account, sign up at linode.com slash learnlinuxtv. The link is in the description. I'd like to thank Linode for not only being awesome, but also for their continued support of my channel. I really appreciate it. Now let's get back to the video. Now what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu Server with LVM and then in this video, I'm also going to give you all of the LVM commands to manage it. And then I'm also going to show you guys how to set up LVM manually. And you know what? I might even throw LVM snapshots in here too. So what I'm going to do right now is switch over to my browser and I'm going to set up a new VM. And I'll show you the section where you can actually set up LVM during the initial installation. So here I am on my Proxmox server. This is the server that I use for basically most of the VMs in my data center here at home. I actually have a data center in my house. Can you believe that? It's called a home lab. And you know what? I've been doing some videos about that. If you guys are curious, I even have a playlist. Now, I just started doing home lab videos, so there's not a whole lot of those right now. But what I'm going to do is show you the process that I went through to create a VM. So I'll expand this here. And we have the two servers right here that I'm using for the purposes of this video. So I'm going to create a new one. I'll give it an ID of 912. And that's going to keep it right along with these right here. Now, this isn't a Proxmox tutorial, so I'm going to go ahead and go through this kind of quickly here. So I'm going to call this LVM example 2. I think that's good enough. For the OS, I'm going to use the Ubuntu server ISO image. Just speeding through these 32 gigs, that's fine. I'll have this on my local LVM. And I'm even using LVM on Proxmox just to show you guys how much I like it. CPU, one is fine. Memory is fine. That doesn't really matter. And the network, I have a dedicated network for VMs and... Let's do it. I'll start after created. That's the checkbox here. Finish. And this server is being created right now. And I'm going to go ahead and install Ubuntu Server. Now I am going to go through this pretty quickly here because I have other tutorials that show you how to set up Ubuntu Server. I just want to speed along to the part where you set up LVM. So for the host name, I'm going to go ahead and just call it the same thing. LVM sample 2. Now, 
Now here's where we actually have some options, okay? We can use the entire disk. We can use the entire disk and set up LVM. And we can also have encrypted LVM as well. Now encrypted LVM is not something I'm going to go over in this video. That's a little bit more advanced. And you might be thinking, well, here we go. Here's the option. Great. Well, no. I mean, yes, that is LVM. That does give you an LVM system, but that's definitely not the one you want. And one of my irritations here, and maybe they will fix this in a newer version, is that they don't let you choose how much of your hard drive to dedicate to LVM. Why is that important? Well, because if you are going to want to benefit from snapshots, LVM snapshots, you'll need some unclaimed space on that device. And if you don't have that, you can't use snapshots. And this is going to use 100% of your drive which means that it basically cancels you out of being able to use LVM snapshots. Now what I do instead is I go down here to manual and this hard drive has never been used before so I need to initialize it. So I'll select it, enter, and then yes for new partition table. And now we have the option right here, configure logical volume manager. I'll press enter and yes. So basically what I'm going to do is set up LVM manually because again, I don't want to use 100% of my hard drive straight out the gate. I want to have some unclaimed space. Now if you recall, on the second server, I was able to expand the file system and grow it. The reason I was able to do that was because I had some unclaimed space that was not being used. If I had 100% of that hard drive used for LVM, I would not have been able to do that. And when I set up a server, even if I don't want to use snapshots, I usually reserve a couple of gigabytes unclaimed. So that way, if my users have an issue with space or something and I need some emergency space in a pinch, I have a few gigabytes that I can use when I need to. Um, and that's great because that gives me a little bit of a buffer. Another reason why you don't want to use 100% of your drive when you set it up. Now, before I set up LVM here, I want to show you guys exactly what an LVM layout actually looks like in practice. And for that, I have this browser window open and I want to give credit to the Geek Diary for this image. I didn't create it. You can even see in the URL right up here. I simply Googled for LVM Linux and this was one of the images that came up. I thought that this would be a good one. So credit to the geekdiary.com for this image. And I'm going to go ahead and explain it. Now down here we have the lowest layer all the way up to the upper layers here. So down here we have one or more physical volumes. A physical volume refers to a hard drive. And you know what? It could be a virtual hard drive, a physical hard drive. It doesn't matter. It's some sort of hard disk that the server has installed. Now you could have just one hard disk and in fact, if I go over to my server here and I look at the hardware, I actually only have this one hard drive right here. So when I, in the console here, set up LVM, I am creating a physical volume. And that's this right here. A physical volume in LVM is basically where you get a hard drive you create a LVM physical volume out of it, which means I am going to use this for LVM. A physical volume means that you have initialized the hard drive so that it can be an LVM physical volume that writes the information to the hard drive that allows it to be used for that purpose. On the upper layer, you have a volume group. And what a volume group actually is, is an arbitrary container for logical volumes. You can see here we have a logical volume in their example, and we have one here as well. So for example, you could have a logical volume for slash, you know, the root file system, another one for slash home if you'd like. You can have one for slash var. You can basically create more than one logical volume for multiple purposes. And I'm going to explain this in more detail later in this video. And then when you create your logical volume, you will format it with a file system, you know, for example, maybe ext4 that'll allow Linux to work with it as it would any other EXT formatted hard drive. Even if it's just a regular hard drive with, you know, that's formatted EXT4, it's the same thing except the logical volume presents an additional layer on top of the volume group 
which can reside on one or more physical volumes. You might be wondering then, okay, I have one physical volume. Why does this example show two more? The reason is because you can add additional hard drives to your system. So let's just say, for example, you did decide to use 100% of your hard drive for LVM. You have no unclaimed space. You can't use snapshots. You can't expand it. Actually, you still can. You can add another hard drive to your server, configure it as a physical volume, apply it to your volume group, and then you can expand the volume group to be consisting of both of those hard drives. So if you have two 16 gig hard drives, now you have what is seen as one 32 gig hard drive and your logical volumes will still be the same size, but you can grow them to make them larger and expand them, which is where we get the benefit. So back here at our Proxmox window, I'm going to go ahead and set this up. So let's choose the first option, display configuration details. Physical volumes, none. Volume groups, none. We have nothing set up right now. So what we need to do is create a volume group. I'll press enter. And for the volume group, I'm going to just call it VG underscore Ubuntu because that's the distribution that I'm running currently or the one I'm installing. But wait a minute. We need a physical volume for the volume group. If you recall, we have this volume group right here, but it sits on top of one or more physical volumes. We don't even have a physical volume yet. Yes, we have a physical hard drive, but it's not configured as a physical volume for LVM. And that's what we're doing. It's showing me all of the hard drives that I have on the server right now. I only have this one, slash dev slash SDA. So by selecting this, I am actually going to be declaring that this hard drive is going to be a physical volume for LVM, and it's going to be used for the new volume group that I'm creating. So I'll go ahead and continue. It's asking me if I want to write the changes. Yes, I do. And let's display the configuration details now. Unallocated physical volumes, none. If we had additional hard drives or additional physical volumes, and maybe I have some physical volumes that are not claimed by this volume group, the extra ones will show here. I don't have any extra ones. I only have the one. Anyway, it's using the physical volume. That's this one right here. And the volume group is VG Ubuntu. So we have effectively set up a physical volume and we created a volume group called um, VG underscore Ubuntu. That's what we've done so far. Continue. Now we need to create a logical volume. We can have more than one if we'd like but I'm going to go ahead and just create one. So I'll press enter on that. And it's going to ask me what volume group I would like to use for that logical volume or, or which volume group I would like that logical volume to reside in. I only have the one, enter. Logical volume name, my naming scheme is LV underscore and then the purpose. So I'll call it root for root file system and then enter. And here's where we get to declare the size. It's going to default to all of the space that's available. That's not what I want to do though. I am actually just going to give it eight gigabytes. So you can just simply do eight G and it gives you some examples here. And then I'll press enter and let's display configuration details again. So we see we have LV root now. So what we've done in, you know, by looking at this example is we've created this logical volume. So we're at this part right now. So I'll continue and then finish. Now we're brought back to the partitioning screen and right here we have our LV root volume, logical volume right here that we can use for the installation. So if I press enter, it says use as and it defaults to do not use. So what I wanna do is format it with ext4. So that's the file system I'm going to go with and that brings us to this. I'm going to format the logical volume as ext4 so that the installation can use it. So enter the mount point. I want it to be the root file system. And then I'll go down to done and then finish partitioning and write changes to disk. And then I'll say yes. And now it's installing Ubuntu on the LVM, on the logical volume that we created, which is in the volume group that resides on the physical volume so we should be all set. I'm not going to let that finish though. 
because this is the end result right here. I already have this set up. I'm just going to delete that one off camera, but you get the point. That's how you set up LVM on the initial installation. So now what I'm going to do is walk you guys through a couple of examples of some additional things that we can do with LVM. So if I do lsblk here on this server, we can see that we have a hard disk SDA. We have a partition SDA1, and that's our physical volume. On that, we have a volume group named VG underscore Ubuntu, and the logical volume is LV underscore root. Now what I'm gonna do is zoom in to this shell right here. I'll increase the font size. Let's run some commands. So I'll do PV display and I'm running as root. You need to have root privileges to run LVM commands. And you can see that PV display gives you information about the physical volume. So we could see it's slash dev slash SDA one. It has volume group VG underscore Ubuntu on it. And it's a 32 Gibby byte. It's showing it in Gibby bytes, but I'll just say gigs just because I'm used to it. And right now it's full, there's, there's nothing available. It's just completely used here. I cannot expand this anymore. It's expanded as much as it can be. Similarly, I can run VG display to display details about the volume group. Quite a bit of info here, huh? So I'll make the font size a little bit smaller. There we go. So volume group VG underscore Ubuntu. LVM2 is a format, that's pretty much always the case nowadays. We get some information about this particular volume group. And just like I can run VG display, as you can guess, I could do LV display as well to view info on the logical volumes that are on this volume group. And we have LV root right here. That's where the Ubuntu distribution is installed, is right there. And that's why we can do df-h. We can see where it's mounted. There it is. And if we take a look at the, the FS tab file, and we can see right here where it's being mounted. This is what is being mounted. This is where it's being mounted. We have ext4 as a file system, standard stuff here. I'm not going over the FS tab, just showing you that it comes full circle because this is how it knows to mount it. This was set up during installation. It already configured this for me. I didn't need to do that. Now let's do something fun. Let's expand the root file system to be a larger size. There's a problem though. We don't have any additional space to work with. It's maximized. So what I'll do is go back here to Proxmox and I'm going to go to our LVM server here to hardware. And what I'll do is add a hard disk 32 gigs, that's fine. I'll just go ahead and add it. So now we have another hard drive on that server. I didn't even need to shut it down. So if I do LS BLK, we can see now we have SDB. We have another hard drive on this server that we can benefit from. So let's go ahead and use it. So to turn the second hard drive, SDB, into a physical volume, we will use the pvcreate command. You'll need to use sudo or be running as root as I am. I prefer to run as sudo, but you know, I was already logged in as root when I went to destroy the file system or fill it up, so I was still logged in as root. It doesn't matter. Either way, you need root privileges in some form or fashion. So pvcreate and then dev sdb. Be very careful here because if you use pvcreate against a hard drive, that's not the one you wanted to use it on. You are wiping out your entire file system. So just be sure of that. And I am. So enter. And that was quick. Literally that easy. We have converted the second hard drive into a physical volume for LVM. It's ready to go. However, that doesn't really give us anything as far as additional space for LVM. I could do PV display. And we can see dev sdb is a new physical volume. Volume group name, none. 
It's not part of a volume group. It's just a physical volume for LVM that's not claimed by LVM. Let's take care of that right now. What we can run is the VG extend command. And again, we need root. This is the last time I, I'll warn you about that because, you know, everything I'm doing basically needs root here. So VG extend is the command. And what we want to do is type the name of the volume group that we want to extend. And now what do we want to extend it with? Well, we just created a physical volume slash dev sdb. So we are going to extend VG Ubuntu by adding this physical volume to it. So enter. And it's been successfully extended. Now, if we look at the free space, it's unchanged. There's no changes here. We're not that far yet. So if I was to do VG display, we could see something interesting here. We have about 32 gigs free that's not allocated. So we have some additional room here that we can basically play with. Now, we could use this extra space to create a new logical volume if we wanted to. Or we could just simply use it to expand the one that we have. Again, we only have the one, which is the root file system, you know, this line right here. We only have the one logical volume. So let's go ahead and expand that one. So what I'm going to do is run LV extend to extend the logical volume, dash uppercase L. I'm going to add just 10 gigabytes to it. I'm not going to use the entire thing. Now, earlier in the video, we did use the 100% free. It was a small L instead of a big L. And I'll have all the commands in the description below in the wiki article, so you don't have to rewind the video. You can simply just click on that link and scroll up and you'll see that command. You could use the 100% free method to give it everything. But in this case, I just want to give it 10 gigabytes extra because maybe that's all I need. And then what I want to extend is dev mapper. And this was in the df-h output. vg underscore ubuntu hyphen lv underscore root. That's the one that I want to expand. And let's do df-h and see the magic. And it's the same. Nothing has changed. Well, why is that? Well, because we have one more step. We need to resize the file system so that it can then use the available space that the LVM logical volume now has. Now for that, we can use the resize to fs command. And then the, I'll just type it out here. Just like that, resize to fs is not specific to LVM, but this command will expand the file system to take advantage of all the extra space that it has. So enter, and here we go. Now one thing to note here, it says file system at, then it has the path, is mounted. Okay, so it's mounted. It says online resizing required. Well, great, that's what I wanted anyway. I wanted it to be resized online without having to restart the server, and now, we have more space available. It's now a 42 gig volume, and we have 33 gigs available to us now. So I was able to expand that. How cool is that? And you know what? I'm going to expand it again. I'm going to unzoom in Tmux. And again, I have a whole series on Tmux, so don't worry too much about how I'm doing this but we can watch the file system space on the bottom because I still have that command running. And what I'm gonna do right now, you know what, I'm just gonna give it the remaining space, why not? So I'm going to run LV extend again, but with a different method this time. I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to add the resize FS option to this, so it'll automatically resize the logical volume and I don't need to run that extra command. Dash lowercase L this time, last time we used an uppercase L plus 100% and then free in all caps and then the path. Now check this out. Now watch here at the bottom, watch this line when I press enter. Boom, look at that. Now it's 63 gigs and we have available space and that's great. We were able to do that online without having to restart the server. Now I'm going to show you guys another example. I'm going to go ahead back here on my Proxmox and I'm going to add another hard disk to this machine. So basically the same thing I did before. I'll just leave it as a 32 gig volume. That's fine. 
We now have three hard drives on this server. And I'll prove it because now we have SDC that is completely unconfigured. So I'm going to go through the same exercise again. PV create, we need a physical volume. And that's all there is to it. And now what I'm going to do is create a new volume group, a brand new volume group. Let's create a new one. So the command to do that is this one, VG create. I'm going to call mine VG extra for extra storage. And I'm going to use the new physical volume dev SDC to be the one to use for that. And now I'll do VG display. And basically I'll have to make this smaller here. It'll show me all of the volume groups, but it's already on the one I want. And VG extra, that's the name we gave it. And allocated is zero. Nothing is being used. All of it is free. So that's great because we could go ahead and use it for whatever purpose we want. So let's create some logical volumes. So I'll do LV create. Then I want to use VG extra. That's the volume group I want to use for this logical volume. Dash uppercase L. I want it to be five gigs and dash N. I need to give it a name. LV underscore logs. Maybe I'm going to store log files here or something. I don't know. Just an example. And then enter. Then LV display, and we have it right here. And we also have the path for it. Great. Now what we need to do is format it before we can use it. I'm going to use the mkfs.ext4 command. I want to format it with ext4, and then I'll type the path dev mapper vg extra, and I just tab completed that, enter and now it's formatted. Now right now, you can see that I only have this. So what I need to do is actually mount the new logical volume that I created. But first I need to create a directory to mount it. So what I'm going to do is mkdir-p because I'm going to be creating a couple layers of directories here, slash mnt, extra, and then logs. And now what I can do is mount dev mapper, VG extra, and I can mount that to the new directory, extra logs, enter. And sure enough, I have now mounted the new logical volume right here, and I can go ahead and use it. But I'm not quite done yet. What I want to do now is make sure that when I boot the system that this logical volume will automatically be mounted. Now, there's a few ways we can do this. Now, the way I like to do it, I'll run blkid, and I'll run it against dev mapper, you guessed it, vg extra, the same path, and it gives me this uuid. This is a universally unique identifier. I'm going to use that to refer to this new volume. Now, you could use dev mapper vg extra. You could use that, but I want to go ahead and do this. Now, what we want to do is make a backup copy of the FS tab file because we're about to edit that. So what I'll do is just copy Etsy FS tab and I'll copy it to just BK for backup or something like that. That's fine. We just want to make a backup of it just in case we make a mistake. The next thing we want to do is U mount, mount extra logs. It's not mounted. Now we can go ahead and edit the FS tab file so that way it'll automatically be mounted when we reboot the system. So nano Etsy FS tab just like that. So here we have the FS tab file. So what we'll do is just basically add a new line down here, UUID equals, then I'll paste in the UUID that I copied earlier. This will be different for everyone. And then we type where we want to mount it to, mount extra logs. And then the file system type is ext4. I'll use defaults for the options, then zero, and then two. The last digit right here, two, means I just want it to be the last priority. If there's a file system check, the root file system is more important. And then control O to save. And you could pause the screen if you need to jot down the formatting. Again, I'm going to have this in the um, description below. There's going to be a wiki article anyway. But I've essentially added this information to the FS tab file. Now again, this new volume is not mounted. 
So what I want to do now is test the FSTab file because you should absolutely not restart your machine until you have first tested the FSTab file to make sure that there's no problems. We could do mount-a because what that's going to do is mount everything in the FSTab file that's not already mounted. And we don't have the new volume mounted because I unmounted that. So let's press enter. And it looks like it worked. There are no errors. So df-h and sure enough, there it is. We know the FSTab file is fine. We're all set because there were no errors and it was able to mount it. So now what I'm going to do is show you guys LVM snapshots. And to do that, why don't I just go ahead and create yet another logical volume? I mean, I do have the space for it. Why not? Let's go ahead and do that. So LV create. And I want to create the new logical volume in VG extra, just like before. And I'll give it five gigabytes in this case with a name of LV underscore web. Just a random example. Maybe we have a web server and this is the logical volume that stores all of the files that are being served. Maybe. I don't know. Simple example, let's press enter. And we did create that logical volume, so good so far. Then we need to format that, so MKFS EXT4, just like last time, dev, mapper, in this case, VG Extra, and web, just like that. That formatted very quickly, we should be good to go. Now we're going to go ahead and repeat the same exercise again, so copy, Etsy FS tab. I know that this one works so I can copy it over the original backup. Then I'll run block ID against the new logical volume. And here we have it. And since I've already made the backup, I can go ahead and just edit that file at CFS tab again. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to do UUID equals. I'm going to paste it in. Mount extra web in this case. EXT four and then defaults zero and then two, just like the first time. And I'm going to save it. But there's something I forgot to do, pretty obvious, but I did forget a step. What I need to do is make the directory that it is actually going to be mounted to, otherwise it won't work. So mkdir slash mnt extra web, just like that. You can see we only have the root file system and the logs logical volume. We have these two mounted. We don't have the new one yet. So we should be able to run mount a if there's no errors. Looks good to me. And here we have it. So we have that mounted. That's awesome. Now to explain snapshots, what I am going to do is create a file on the new logical volume. So I'm going to do echo and then LVM is awesome in all caps because LVM is just that awesome. And I'm going to direct that into mount extra web and I'm going to call this important underscore file dot txt because this is an important file we definitely don't want to lose this do we so I'll press enter and sure enough let's just make sure the file is actually there it's there we can see the path works out we have that file that's awesome so now what I'm going to do is create a snapshot of the web logical volume. So that way I have a recovery point if I ever need to uh, you know, recover it basically or just recover a specific file or something like that. I just want a snapshot to protect myself in case something gets accidentally deleted. So here's how to do that. So we're going to run LV create and then for a snapshot what we're gonna wanna do is type out the path to the logical volume that we want to take a snapshot of even though we want to create a snapshot, we're still using the LV create command. If you recall the LV create command we used to create a logical volume in the first place, but it's also the command that we're going to use to create a snapshot as well. So I just typed out the path to the logical volume. 
We need to give it a size, and I'll explain what that means and why we need to do that in just a moment. I'm going to give it a size of one gigabyte, so this does require that you do have unclaimed space, which I do because I haven't used up all the space just yet. We're going to do dash S because we are clarifying that this is a snapshot. And then we want to give it a name, so dash N. And then you could come up with your own naming scheme, but for me, I'll type this, web snapshot, then the date. Close enough, I'll press enter. And it created a snapshot. So if I run the LVS command, for example, which is yet another command we can use to get some information about logical volumes, we can see that we have the new one right here. This is the original one, but now we have this one. And we can see that its origin is set to LVWeb, which is here. That's how we know it's a snapshot, because it has an origin. None of the other ones do. Just this one, and the origin is the name of, well, it's the name of the logical volume that it is an origin of, and data percent, we have a percentage right here. Why is that important? So if this gets to 100, we're in trouble, because one downside of LVM snapshots there's ways around it, which is you know beyond the scope of this video, but the downside is that we have to be careful that we don't let this get full. Anytime we make changes to this, you know, this logical volume or the source or whatever, it's going to use additional percentage of space to basically um, you know, store the changes, basically. So what we want to do is make sure this doesn't get to 100%. And for that reason, we generally don't want to keep snapshots around forever. This is not a backup. You should have a backup that's off of the server. Snapshots can be used, for example, if you want to test a change. You could even, for example, snapshot your root file system if you have free space that's, that's unallocated. You can definitely do that. You can even run all of your system updates after taking a snapshot. And then if your updates break something, you can restore it, which is awesome. But just keep an eye on this. We, we, don't, we just don't want this to reach 100%. So now what I'm going to do is make a change to the system. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and just remove that file that I created earlier. And it's this one, important file. I'm going to remove an important file. And just to make sure it's gone, you know, it's not there. So I removed an important file. Oh no, whatever can I do? So there's a couple ways we could deal with this. Now one option is we can actually mount the snapshot and we can mount it to a temporary directory or something like that so we can fetch the file that was deleted. So I'll show you that right now. But first of all, I need to make a directory for where I want to mount that to. So I'll just do mount extra snapshot, just like that. So now I'll just go ahead and mount, I'll type out the path, dev, mapper, bg, extra, and then web. That's the snapshot right there. And I'm going to mount it to the directory that I just created then press enter. Now you can see that we actually have the snapshot mounted. So again, if I was to ls against mount extra web files not there, but if I was to do the same thing against the uh, snapshot directory, which has the actual snapshot mounted to it, we do see the file is there. So I could just fetch the file from the snapshot, put it where it's supposed to go, and then delete the snapshot, for example. That's a valid way to do that. But what I'm gonna do, though, is I'm going to unmount the snapshot here and show you guys how to recover that logical volume from the snapshot, basically restore the snapshot. So let's see how to do that. Now, first of all, what I'm going to do is unmount the one that I want to actually recover. So now that one's not mounted anymore. And then I can use the LV convert command to go ahead and restore the snapshot. And the syntax looks something like this. I'm going to merge it. And I'll just type out the path to the snapshot itself. Now, if you remember, the origin is set to the original logical volume. So this should actually overwrite the original. So I'll press enter. And we're ready to go. So what we'll do now is deactivate the logical volume and then reactivate it. So we'll run LV change. And we're doing this just because we want to make sure everything is flushed. 
So again, LV change, and then AN, or dash AN, and then the path to the logical volume, the original one. Just like that, I'll press enter. It's deactivated, and then I'll just change the N to a Y to reactivate it. And now everything should be flushed. So now what we will do is go ahead and remount it. Now, just for comparison, you can see that the web logical volume is not mounted. I added it to the FS tab. You can mount it manually if you like, but I should just be able to do mount A. And we can see that the logical volume LV web has returned to the system. Moment of truth, ls L mount extra web. And the important file is back. We have restored the snapshot. How awesome is that? And you know what? LVM gets even more advanced than this. But I think in this video so far, I've shown you guys everything I think you need to know to really get going with this. I hope this was very helpful because I feel like LVM is just one of these things. It's just this complex, mysterious thing. And you might not know what it's for. Well, hopefully now you know what it's for. In my case, early in my career, I've seen the LVM option presented while installing various distributions, and I've always ignored it. I'm like, eh, I don't know what that is. Maybe I was intimidated by it. I don't know. I was new, and I just never gave it a shot. And then one day, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm going to actually dive into this and learn it because maybe this is something I should be using. And then I just became fascinated with it. And now all of my systems have LVM, even my laptops and desktops, because you never know. Maybe I want to create a snapshot and test some software and restore the snapshot or something like that on a laptop or desktop. I think this has a lot of use cases. Now, obviously, you will want to play around with this on a test system before you put it in production. But hopefully everything in this video I've shown you guys will get you going. This is all the information that I wish I knew when I was starting out in Linux. And hopefully you guys don't discover LVM as late in your career as I did because it's just one of those things that, you know, I just never bothered with, and I wish I have learned about it earlier on. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. If it was, please click that like button. That lets YouTube know that you want to see more Linux content just like this. And I will see you in another video. I have some awesome stuff coming. I can't wait. So stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.